Hey everyone, today we're gonna to learn how to create a branching video inside of Articulate Storyline 360. So let's go ahead and get started. My name is Jeff Batt, and if you haven't checked out my website already, go ahead and check out my website at learningdojo.ninja. Here you can check out all previous blog posts covering everything from A to Z in Camtasia, Articulate Storyline 360, development in general. You can also download free templates in Articulate Storyline 360, as well as XAPI and video templates. And if any of these topics are new to you, you can check out full courses covering everything from A to Z in Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Camtasia, Articulate Rise, Custom Scorm, and HTML5 video. The idea of creating interactive video has always fascinated me. I started out in video, so I love video, but making it interactive and taking it to the next level has always been something that, that I've been very interested in. So I wanted to cover just how you would take that and kind of make a branching scenario inside of Articulate Storyline and allow the users to make a choice. Here's the scenario, here's the setup. Depending on the choice that I make, what reaction in the video will happen. And so that is what we're gonna be covering today. Just a simple kind of getting you started with this idea, and then you can take it and you can make the branching as intense as you want it to be. Let's go ahead and cover exactly the files that we have so far to begin with. I have these couple different videos, and a lot of it, especially if you're creating these different scenarios, has to do with how you film it. So you'll film the intro scenario, and then you'll have some type of pause. In this case, I'm not gonna play the audio here, but I have this scenario where an employee is about to bring up a concern with the manager. Now, before the manager responds, I'll pause the video and I'll give the learner a choice. Depending on the choice that they make, it'll take them to one of two choices. And then from there, you could take them to several choices and keep branching out as far as you want. Here is the first choice, and I'm labeling it as good response. You don't have to do that. You can label it as whatever mediocre response or just even okay response or just seeing the different reaction. Here's the manager as they start to react in a good way. So the learner can see exactly how this is supposed to be demonstrated, and then they can continue or make another choice at that point. Maybe the employee gets more upset, or maybe the employee calms down or something like that. So you can create as many of these scenarios as you want. Now, I took a step back when I filmed this, and I had them start over and say, okay, in this case, you're going to film an outrageous response. You, the manager is gonna get upset by what the employee said, and so let's go ahead and film that. So you can see his reaction here. He's kind of more upset. He's pointing fingers, blaming them, and so that is the bad choice. Those are my two different choices. And then I have this overall choice, which just covers everything. Now, the reason why I split all of these up is so I can put those on separate pages inside of Articulate Storyline. I can do something similar if I use the whole scenario, but I'd have to pause the video, I'd then have to jump to a certain point in the video and I'd have to come back. With Storyline, it's actually a whole lot easier to split that up into different pages. One thing I highly recommend because you're working with video and video takes up the largest amount of size for your course than anything else, I recommend using a tool like Handbrake. I usually pull this up inside a handbrake and then I will condense the video. If I go into the video section, I will take this bit rate down to at least a thousand. By doing that, it's gonna save a ton of file size. And then I don't have to worry about loading time. I don't have to worry about, depending on where the person at is in the world, if it's going to be able to load for them or not, the video is going to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. But let's go into Storyline, and so far I just have one blank page. I'm going to, and you could probably prompt the user of like, here's the scenario, here's what's going to happen. I'm not gonna do that, let's just get to the branching for now. So I'm gonna click on Insert. Let's go to our video section. I'm gonna go into my desktop and click on Intro here. Because of the way that I size the Storyline page, it's going to fill the entire screen inside of Storyline here. So my video is 16 by nine, and my Storyline size is 16 by nine as well. I kind of like the video being full screen there. Let's make sure inside of our settings that we have the player controls, but let's make sure that we have the seek bar down at the bottom. That way the learner can play and pause and rewind if needed as well. I'm gonna click okay. 
Now what we need to do is we need to, at the end of the video, create a prompt that will create a branch to either one or the other choice. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create a new page. Let's just create the pages for now. It's going to be a blank page and I'm gonna call this good choice. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new slide here. And this is also going to be a blank page as well, but this is going to be my bad choice. So let's say bad choice. I'm gonna get rid of the controls inside of Storyline, that default next and back, because I want to be able to control the navigation based on a pop-up that the learner will see, and then it will take them down to whatever choice they've made at that point. To get rid of the controls, you click on the gear icon down at the bottom right-hand side, and then you go ahead and unselect where it says next and previous. I'm gonna select OK, and I need to do the same thing for the good choice and the bad choice. Now I can go into each page and do that same thing, or I can go back to the story view and I could select each page and hold the shift button that I want to affect. And you'll see the slide properties, which are the same thing that I was just working with. And I can affect it for several different pages all at once. Again, I want to be able to control the navigation. So I'm getting rid of the default player navigation so they can't skip the page if they're trying to jump forward or anything like that. All right, so let's go back into our intro. We kind of have that set up right now, but let's have a pop-up happen at the end of the slide. You can see the video is very short, so it's only about six seconds long. So let's insert something. And in fact, I even like to do this on a layer. So I'm gonna show the layer when the video ends. That way it doesn't overlap with the video playing or anything like that. Let's go ahead and add a layer. And this is going to be my question. So I'm gonna say question choice. Now, what we can do to kind of darken out the background without making it completely invisible is go into the settings here, and then I can come over and adjust the present as to dialogue. What that does is it kind of darkens out the background. So I want them to not leave the video, but not focus on the video. And so it's gonna pop open with this question. Let's go into our shape here, and I'm gonna create a little pop-up I'm going to affect the rounded corners there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take out the outline. I don't like the outline. If you've ever taken one of my courses, you know that that is like something I hate. So I get rid of the outline. I don't like the outline at all. I'm gonna go into my effect and go into shadow and let's just create, I like the effect of having a little bit of a distance between the pop-up and the background. That's the reason why I do that. And then with just one object selected, if you click on the center vertically and horizontally, that will just make sure that it centers it right in the middle. Now let's go ahead and give our choice. I don't like to add an additional text element when I'm working with shapes. I like to type my text in right inside of the shape. It's just one less element that I have to work with on the stage. Let's say, how would you, and I'm not seeing the text because the default is white. I don't know why. I'm gonna go ahead and change that to dark there. How would you react to this employee? Employee's response. Looks like I don't need that apostrophe. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Now I do wanna have choices down at the bottom. So that means I wanna push my question up a little bit. With that selected, I can go ahead and go to text align and go to top. I still don't like how that's kind of right up against the edge. So you can just play with it going into the formats. Let's expand that out here. So expand and see the additional options, go into the text box. And then on the top one, let's go ahead and add that as a 30 pixel padding and that pushes it down. And I like that a lot better. And I like to bold certain words as well. I don't know, that's just a style thing. How would you react there? Okay, so let's go ahead and give them choices. So I'm gonna click on insert. We're gonna have two different choices here and you can come up with the scenario you want. I'm more focused on the development right now. Let's just go ahead and say good choice. And then let's get rid of that outline just to kind of change things up a little bit. Let's go ahead and select a darker blue here. And let's go ahead and copy this and paste it just so we have our second choice. And I'm gonna call this bad choice. Obviously, if I'm doing this for real, I'm not gonna say good choice and bad choice and give the learner the exact answers, but you get my drift here. I like to name my objects on my layers just so when I'm starting to create the different links, it makes more sense for me there. I'm gonna call this one text because that's the text area. I'm gonna call this one choice A and then I'm gonna call this one choice B. 
what we need to do is we need to show this layer at the end of the timeline. So we're almost good. I'm gonna right click and actually go to copy because I'm gonna paste that into other pages so I don't have to rebuild the same thing over and over. But we'll come back to that, but at least we have it copied now. Let's go into our base layer and let's go ahead and trigger the layer to show at the end of the video. We're going into the win section and now we're gonna go ahead and go to timeline ends. What we're going to do is we're going to show the layer. We're gonna go ahead and show the layer in this case. Let's watch what happens now. So when I preview the layer, it's gonna show the video and at the end of the timeline, it's gonna go ahead and show that layer. There's my video. I could get rid of the menu if I wanted to. I could get rid of the title and just have the video, but there's my choices. I'll choose the good choice or the bad choice at this point. Now I will have to come in here. And in fact, we probably don't wanna copy the layer yet. I already copied it, but I'm gonna go ahead and go in and adjust the layer. And I'm gonna create triggers right here. So choice A, it's going to jump to a certain slide. We're gonna have this jump to slide. I'm gonna select this drop down box and do good choice here. And then I'm gonna click OK. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add the bad choice. Now, instead of just going to the next slide, I wanna specifically tell it which slide to go to because if I copy this and paste it, it'll be easier for me to select the new slide rather than just the next slide in case I don't wanna to go to just the next slide. I'm gonna select this drop down box here. And then in this case, it's going to not good choice. This one is gonna to go to the bad choice and not when the timeline ends. I still had that. It kind of throws me off sometimes, but this is gonna be when the user clicks on choice B. And then this one is not when timeline ends. It's gonna be when the user clicks on choice A. Just make sure you have that because now all I have to do is copy and paste it. So I'm gonna copy the whole layer, right click and go to copy. And now I could come into good choice here and I could paste that. And now I have that at the end of this video to have another choice and to continue to create these branches basically. So right here, when the user jumps, it's going to not jump to this slide, but that's where I will just make the, select the drop down box and whatever the additional slides that I'm going to at that point is what I would do. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing here just so we have the layer over here. And now what we're going to do is come in here and on the good choice, we're gonna insert that other video. I'm gonna click on inserts and then we're gonna insert that video. This is gonna be the good response. This is where like naming your content is gonna be helpful, your videos. So you know that it's choice one, choice A, choice B, choice C, different things like that. When you start to put it together, it will save you a whole lot of time. All right, so there is my good choice. Let's go into my bad choice, the base layer, and let's go ahead and insert that. I'm gonna insert the bad choice as well. Now on both of these slides, we don't have a trigger to show the layer. So I'm gonna copy the one that's on the first slide and paste it here, just so we have that working as well. Once you set up your layers, it's easy just to copy and paste it. And in fact, I could have just duplicated this slide and swapped out the video. That probably would have been a little bit easier but I'm going to go into this base layer here and I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go ahead and paste that right there. And you may have to select the drop down box to question choice again, which is fine. Even though it's named the same thing, it's just a different slide. So that's really what we're doing here. Now let's go ahead and preview this entire thing. It will have the video play and then it will give us our choice. So there's the video. At the end of the six seconds there, it's going to pop open with a question. Oh, in fact, I just did that one question that I was on. Let's go back to the beginning. And I did notice that the slider, the seek bar was not showing on this one. So I'm gonna make sure the seek bar is there. Now I could just have the player defaults have the seek bar, but I don't wanna have it on every single page. And so that's why I'm doing that just manually. Let's preview the entire project. Now it should give us our entire project and allow us to go to the different pages from there. So we have the first slide. It's going to pause at the end of the six seconds. I'm gonna say good choice. It's gonna take me to my good choice. And there we go. We do have one other problem here is notice how the good choice and the bad choice is inside of the menu. On these different branching scenarios, I'll probably want to hide these from the menu because I don't want to specifically allow them to jump to the good choice or allow them to jump to the bad choice from the menu. I want them to be able to do that from the page. To fix that, we go back into our home page here, we go into the player section, and then what we do is we go into our menu section here, 
and we can go ahead and just delete that. Now it does not delete it from the course. In fact, the branching is still the same, but what it does is it deletes it from the menu. So now the learner can't jump to that specific thing without going through the proper channel basically. And in fact, I'm just gonna even like collapse the menu at first and then I'm gonna click okay. By doing that, now we don't have the menu where they can jump to the choices. We just have the first choice, full screen at this point, and then it will give them the question and then they can branch out from there. So I'm gonna click on good choice. There's my good choice. And I probably did not actually preview the entire project. Let's try that one more time. There's my initial choice. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say good choice. And then it will take me to the good choice there. Hopefully that was helpful for you to see how you can create these video branching scenarios and how you would set up your videos in different ways to be able to show different reactions based on the user choice. This creates a much more engaging user experience because the user is affecting the outcome. It's almost like those choose your own adventure books. Uh, if you ever read those back in the day, where it, depending on the choice that you made, you'll see a different outcome. I think it's pretty cool. You can do all of that inside a storyline. Just make sure you condense your video, have that ready to go as well. And if you wanted to check out more, head on over to my website at learningdojo.ninja. Here you can check out all of my previous blog posts covering everything learning development related. You can download templates. You can check out all full courses in Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Camtasia, Articulate Rise, Custom Scorm, and HTML5 video. Also, if you like this video, head on over to my YouTube channel, click that like button and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification so you get notified of all future videos as they come out. That really helps my channel, allows my channel to continue to grow, allows me to continue to produce these videos for you to help you with your learning developments. If you have any questions also on my YouTube channel, ask a question below. I check those out every week and uh, I'll answer any question that you may have below there. So that's all I have for today. So thanks everyone and I'll see you next time. Yeah.